This tutorial video is going to demonstrate how to create this bolt in Autodesk Inventor. Now we're going to do something different here that we haven't done yet, which is to use a 3D sketch. Using a 3D sketch, we're going to use the helical curve tool to create the path that we're going to use to sweep the thread pattern. And I like to do that first, even before I create my solid object. So I'm going to select the helical curve tool. And I'm really just going to get it on the board here. I'm not going to worry too much about size or any of the features because I have to go reset those anyways. Um, what you need to do is look at which of these options you have the correct information for. If I look over here, I've got diameter. I've got height. I do not have revolutions, but I do have pitch. And pitch is basically the distance from one thread to the next. At the same point in the threads, what's the distance between? That is your pitch when it comes to... Um, millimeters at least. Imperial is slightly different, but it's essentially the same thing, just a different measure. Up here we have uh, opposite rotation options and then some other options here as far as the curve itself, but let's not stray here. So I have pitch and height. I'm going to enter my values. I don't have any taper, so I'm not going to touch that. And there is my spiral helix. This is the pattern for how we're going to cut the threads. Now what I need to do is make this fully constrained like we do with everything. So constraints for 3D um, sketches are slightly different. Everything here is a little bit different. It, it would be good to spend a little time getting used to it, but I'm just going to run through what we need here. Now I'm going to reference all of these uh, origin planes and axes to make this work right. The first thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to take the uh, bottom point which it's irrelevant if you use top or bottom. And I'm going to put that on the origin or my center point. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is this guide center line. I'm going to put on one of my axes that it happens to be closest to, which is my Y axis. So I'm going to take the collinear because I'm putting two lines on the same line. I'm going to select my line and then the axis. As you can see, it blacked that out. Now the last thing should be these endpoints. We have to take one, at least one of these endpoints, and put it on a plane. So I'm going to take this top endpoint, take the coincident, and I'm going to put it right on one of these origin planes. Now there's two of them you could use, and it really doesn't matter which one you choose. And as you can see, it fully constrained that, so I'm done with that part of the sketch. Um, now what I need to do is create my solid, and then create the, the uh, profile right at the end of that path and then sweep it. So I'm going to go back and do a 2D sketch. And I'm going to use this bottom plane to make my solid object. And all this is is a 14 millimeter circle that did not stick to the origin, but I can make that happen very easily. Extrude it 40 millimeters tall. Now you could get a little fancy. Oops, I forgot to change this to millimeters. I'm just going to go with it now, but the first step should always be to change it to millimeters. Okay, so 14. All right, here's my sketch. Let's extrude it 40 millimeters tall. Now what you could do is you could extrude it slightly longer so that you can clean up the bottom edge of it by extruding the head into the body. Not something you can do in real life, but in CAD, you can do things a little bit different and uh, to create you know, some nice results. Okay, so I have my solid body, I have my path, now I need my profiles. Now my profile needs to be exactly at this point here, which, if you remember, I put right on one of the origin planes, which is this one. So I'm going to select that plane. Inventor has this nice tool where if you right click on the body and click slice graphics, you can go right to where your plane is. And you're essentially cutting that cylinder in half because that's where you're sketching. Now I'm going to create a triangle because that is the shape of these threads as a triangle. Now as you can see, it put in a vertical constraint here, which I absolutely need. A collinear would also work. If this cut line isn't present and all you have to do is project that line into your sketch. 
I have dimensions of 60 millimeters and 2 millimeters. So essentially the width or height of this is 2 millimeters. And my angle is 60 millimeters. Now it looks pretty goofy here, but if you look here, essentially I have an isosceles triangle. So I need to make sure that these are equal and that should fix it. There we go. Now the last thing is obviously that came off of my point. And it's absolutely critical that you are on your point. Now that got a little goofy, but it's an easy fix. Should be an easy fix. Let's see what's going on here. Whoops. No. Somehow that point came off. Let's try it again. Okay, better. Now it is critical that you have an intersecting point between your path and your profile. If you don't, is it sweeps are not going to work. All right, let's go ahead and see if the sweep works. Model sweep. It picked up my profile. Now let's try the helix path, and I get a good um, preview. If you don't get a preview, then something's probably wrong. All right, that looks excellent. Now, as you can see, the ends are a little rough. It doesn't cut all the way through to the bottom. You could remedy that by having a longer helix. Instead of going 40 millimeters, you could go 42. Um, and the top is a little ugly. And this is a really good place to create your own chamfer with the revolve tool. Okay, now one thing to, to notice is on the drawings, the threads on this are rounded. On the nut down here, they're not, but on the bolt, they are. That actually is going to serve to make our bolt quite a bit stronger because there's not going to have those points of stress where this triangular tip is, you know, kind of where the, the tip of the cutter would be. Over here, you can kind of zoom in and see this is a, a very angular, very sharp, and sharpness with real life objects, especially metal, is a place where they break and crack. So since we're going to be 3D printing this, we're going to go back and slightly modify the sketch. Now you can see here there are, uh, the outside has a radius and the inside has a radius, both of 0.3 millimeters. So I have a couple options here. The inside one is very easy. I can put a, I'll put your number in first. I can. Use the fillet tool. I can add an arc in, whatever works for you but make sure you put in your number first 0.3 and there's my fillet now this one is slightly more complicated but here's the way to do it make sure and slice this so i can see it okay so this is going to come back this direction at 60 millimeters i just created a little line here and now i'm just going to create another uh arch or excuse me arc right in here kind of an arch um, i need to put tangents in here so that it's very very smooth i need to put my dimension of 0.3 and then it should figure out the rest there we go now the one thing to do is shorten this to the end point and just make sure that you select this in your sketch actually i'm going to make that construction so I only have to select two profiles instead of three now as you can see here it's going to essentially cut this part off and leave this part on which um, if you made your threads according to the dimensions that sh you shouldn't have interference problems here but if you do um, you can either modify the net if you choose to make it but this crew just well the reason we do this because it makes our bolt a lot stronger and less prone to breaking across the threads which for 3d printing with pla um, you know breakage is kind of part of the game okay as you can see once i hit okay it actually um, changed that design and put that uh, nice arc or radius in there but what i have to do is go back into the sweep and select the second profile which is this guy and then you should you should see it cut kind of the outside or the major diameter. So there you go. Now it's nice and rounded and should be significantly stronger. Now let's create the head. 
And this is just a very simple extrusion at the bottom. So well, that was not the bottom. So I'm going to sketch here. Use a six sided polygon because it's just a very simple hex head design. Give it a flat to flat dimension. Extrude it. Now, like I said, if you wanted to get a little creative, you could extrude it into the bolt head as long as you had, you know, the proper dimensions when it was done. So you could have made the bolts 42 uh, or 44 and then extrude it into the head to kind of clean up that end. Um, not required, but not exactly the worst idea either. The last thing is to take one of these two planes either the X, Y, or the X, Z, and do a very small revolve triangle right in this area to cut a nice chamfer on the nose. And that would just make it much easier to get your nut on and start the threads. Uh, but that's essentially how you create the bolt. Last thing is just create some personally identifiable um, initials on the bolt head, put it in your extrusion so that we know whose is whose when it gets printed out. But that is how you create a bolt, and you can do that with essentially any size threads that you need. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it.